Food Test Required Practical by kscience.com. Before you test the food, you must prepare the food. So this is how we do the food preparation. So you get a pestle and mortar, and then you're going to put the food sample into the mortar. You use the pestle to crush the food to as small pieces as you can. You then place the now crushed food sample into a beaker. And now you add distilled water. You add distilled water to the ground up food sample. And now you use a glass rod to stir the food sample in the distilled water. The food molecule should now be dissolved in the distilled water. You're now going to filter out the undissolved larger pieces of food from the solution. So now you filter the solid bits of food out of the solution. You now have your food sample ready. You do this for each food group. We're now going to test the food for starch. You get five centimeters cubed of your sample and the test for starch is iodine. So you're going to add iodine to your sample. So if there is no starch present in the sample, when you add your iodine to the sample, your sample will remain orange. The iodine will remain orange. However, if there is starch present, when you add the iodine to your sample, the iodine is going to turn a blue-black color. So iodine in the presence of starch turns blue-black. So when there is no starch present in the sample, iodine remains orange. However, iodine turns from orange to blue-black when starch is present. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're going to test for sugars. These sugars are called reducing sugars. So you get five centimeters cubed of your food sample. You heat water in a water bath and you place your food sample in a test tube rack into the water in the water bath. The water bath is set to 75 degrees. It is very hot. Watch out, do not touch it. It can cause you to get burns. Test for reducing sugars is Benedict's solution. Benedict's solution is blue. So when you add Benedict's to your food sample, it's going to firstly appear blue. You place the sample with the Benedict's back into the water bath for five minutes. And if there is no color change after five minutes, so if the Benedict's solution remains blue, that means there are no reducing sugars in the solution. However, if there is a color change in the Benedict's solution of blue to green, that means there is low or trace amounts of reducing sugars in your food sample. So that means there is some but very, very little sugar in your food sample. And if the color change of the Benedict solution after five minutes is blue to an orangey yellow color, so an orangey color, that means there is going to be a higher concentration of reducing sugars in your food sample. So there's going to be a higher concentration of reducing sugars in your food sample if the color change is blue to an orangey yellow. The color change that shows the highest concentration of reducing sugars in a food sample would be if the Benedict solution turns from blue to a dark red color. This shows the highest concentration of reducing sugars. So remember, Benedict's is blue, and if it remains blue, there are no reducing sugars. If it turns green, there are trace amounts of reducing sugars. If it turns orangey or yellow, there is a higher concentration of reducing sugars. And if the Benedict's turns from blue to brick red, that means that is the highest concentration of reducing sugars that Benedict's solution can detect for. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding.
we're now going to go through the test for proteins. The test for protein is using burettes. Burettes is a blue liquid, and you take two centimeters cubed of your food sample and you add the burettes to it. You then give the solution a shake, so you then shake the solution. And if protein is present, you'll see a color change of blue to purple. So remember, if protein is present, you're going to see a color change of the burettes from blue to a purple color. And if there is no protein present, the burettes will simply stay blue. So remember, the protein test is burettes. If burettes goes from blue to purple, that means that protein is present. If the burettes stays blue, that means there is no protein present in the food. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're now going to go through the test for lipids. So you take five centimeters cubed of your food sample and you add a reagent called Sedan 3. So you add Sedan 3, which is a red liquid. When you add Sedan 3, you then shake the test tube of your food sample and Sedan 3 in it. So if there are no lipids in your solution, there'll be no layer formed. There will be no red layer. However, if there are lipids present in your solution, there's going to be a red layer formed. This is because Sudan 3 stains lipids. So if there is a layer of fat not dissolved in the water and floating on water beneath it, the Sudan 3 will stain the lipids and not dissolve in the water. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Visit kscience.com for more free videos, worksheets, and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.